Um, just should mention that today's draw along is one of Derbyshire Wildlife Trust's Ghost of the Landscape events. Um, you can search online to find more out about those. There's an art auction, um, so you might want to get involved with that. Uh, and for the writers among you, uh, there are workshops and writing competitions too for children and adults. But yes, before we get cracking and start to draw, um, we're going to have a bit of a reminder of Lauren's incredible animation, which you might have seen as part of Sky Dancer Day this year. So let's just sit back and enjoy. Hidden in the moorlands is a rare, ghostly silver figure with bright yellow eyes. The Hen Harrier. At the beginning of spring, he launches from the heather in a somersaulting and tumbling dance. If this sky dancer is lucky, his display will impress a female and they will couple up to breed. They build a nest amongst the long heather and grass, on which the female can lay between three to five eggs. The team works together as she incubates their eggs and he hunts to feed them both. After a month, the chicks hatch and are born defenceless with a bit of downy fuzz, relying on their parents to feed and protect them. By early July, the chicks begin to fly the nest, but remain reliant on their parents for a few more weeks. The juveniles then begin to spread out, males finding new territories as far as France, Spain and Portugal, spending the winter in lowland heaths, marshes and farmland. Sadly, not all of the chicks will survive to adulthood and are in danger of being illegally killed once they leave the nest. If they're lucky, two springs later, having grown their silvery plumage, the new sky dancers will take to the upland moors and the cycle begins again. Absolutely stunning. I absolutely love that. And it just shows how sort of powerful using animation together with the sound can really tell a story and can really sort of um, help us to learn really quickly and effectively about the hen harrier. But I, I just love how Lauren shows the passing of a month with that beautiful moon passing, showing that that's actually the mm -hmm. time the, um, the hen harrier is sitting on the nest incubating her chicks. It's so it's so powerful and great fun too. Um, did you have great fun doing it, Lauren? I did, yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's it's quite a simple sort of method doing the stop motion animations. All you have to do is line everything up, then basically take a photo and then move it slightly, take another photo, move it slightly. And that's the gist of it really. So um, you, you can be really creative and um, it's, it's a really nice opportunity to do loads of drawing and painting and um, and then putting it all together on the computer. And I also learned a lot about hen harriers that I didn't know before doing, doing all the research and everything. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's fun to sort of show it to people who might not really be interested in nature so much, but just be like, look what I made. And then they accidentally learn things. So that's, kind that's of such a good way, accidentally teaching people stuff. That's the way yeah. forward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, look at this pretty flower. And then it's like, don't do things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> here's what no, it is and here's what's important. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, but it's good. They're, nice. they're, um... Well, should we hand over to you then, Lauren? You can. Yes, exactly. So oh, sorry, yeah. there is a there is a bit of a lag, so apologies in advance. But yes, hand over to you, and you can tell us what we need to do and how we can get cracking. 
Perfect. Yeah, now we know what a Hanario is. Um, so all we need to start with is a pencil and a rubber. I say a rubber because we're going to draw some shapes in first um, to guide us and then we're going to rub them out. So make sure that you don't, you know, press really hard when you're um, when you're putting in these shapes um, or use a pen because then you might regret it. But you can always have another go. It doesn't matter. Anyone can draw. Just no pressure on it. Just do what you like, really. <laughs> so we're going to start with the head. And I'm just positioning myself in sort of the top left hand corner ish of the page. And I'm just going to draw a kind of a, a longish rectangle. So just a bit longer than a square. And I'm just being quite sketchy here. Then adding on a couple of semicircle type arcs on the outside. And that is your kind of vague hen Harry head shape. Then if you come to the left hand edge of this semicircle here and just draw a line straight down. So it's going to look a bit weird at the moment, like a <laughs> ice cream cone. Oh, well, it looks a bit like a bug, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mine looks like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to put the body in. So they've got kind of a long neck, so make sure you leave a bit of a gap between where this the body's going to be. And this is like a kind of a large-ish oval shape. I think it's a really interesting way of learning to draw doing these shapes, isn't it? Because you sort of you <laughs> get to sort of understand the shape of the whole animal and where the body sits so yeah, oh, yeah. here we are it's um it's quite a, a good way to get to know what what it kind of looks like when you you have a go a few times and learn what the shapes are um so right with, with this with this section that we've got done already we're just going to add a bit of an outline in so again just kind of pressing quite lightly and i'm just going all the way around the shapes leaving a little tail there Going around, so kind of loosely hugging the shapes, uh -huh. and there you go. There's your bird. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Uh, okay. <laughs> then I'm just going to add in a couple more ovals. Be able to guess what these are. <laughs> Um, just making sure that they are the same height. So I'm just drawing in a line there just to make oh, sure. Okay. Then, uh, and it goes all the way down to the bottom of the body because they've actually got really quite large wings, actually. Um, then just drawing another semicircle here as if we were drawing another oval on the other side. Right. And this is, yeah, basically our outline. So just going to add in sort of an area where the legs are going to be so we're going to do two triangles or two lines and they've got kind of fairly long legs so we're going to add in all the detail in a bit okay. yeah just drawing the other leg behind it and another stick and yeah we'll do the feet in a bit i'll show you how to do that so I'm quite quite pleased with this actually already. Yeah. Wait, no, wait, so I just leave it now and so it <laughs> quit while I'm ahead. Oh, I've got mine going. Oh, yeah. oh cool. nice. <laughs> we well want to done. see all yours as well. If you can uh, not maybe not now, but at some point, um share them in yeah. Twitter or whatever social media you're using. We'd love to see. I would really love to see everyone. Can you actually see anything? <laughs> a bit of pain. <laughs> we're not meant to press too hard though, are we? So. Exactly. No, so right now we're gonna add in just a couple more lines before we rub out some of these um shapes. So the wings are a little bit more square. So I basically just adding on a kind of a corner here and a corner here. Then another one on the other side. And there we go. Now uh, the tail is is kind of 
uh, like vague triangle shape like this. Um, Can I just have a moment, actually, Lauren? I don't know how you're doing, Jill, but I'm just trying to catch up at the moment. Okay. Yeah, but maybe I'm being really slow. No, <laughs> no, just... that's fine. That's right. Yeah, I've practiced it a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> you can really see the shape starting. So you say when you put those sort of pointy bits on the wings, that's when it really sort of draws it out, isn't it? These yeah. You really see that that's where it's coming. And then, again, the t I think tails are so difficult. I think whenever I try mm. to birds, I always draw the tails far too big. Um, yeah. So quite interesting to do it this way and see the, that smaller triangle that you've drawn there. That's, that's, that's yeah, cool. it's good to, um, to sketch things out first because it's hard to move things around once you have really start working on it a lot, I find. You also mm. get put off because you're like, oh, I've spent five minutes on this already. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. But um, often it is just worth starting again, I find. It always turns out better the second time. <laughs> how, are we get, how are we getting on? Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, getting there, I think. As you can see, I haven't draw drawn anything, so I'm just making this up. <laughs> I'm just yes. going to take a screen grab of, of what Lauren's drawn on the, on the left and pretend it's mine. That's my plan. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. Here's my um... Oh, yes, look, here's one, I, here's one I drew earlier. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <wow. laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just did that. You worked so quickly. <laughs> I know. That's Donald Watson's book. He was an artist as well as um wrote about the hen harrier. Oh, um, it, there's such beautiful illustrations in this book um as well. Really nice. Yeah, I always um I'm still not out of the habit of picking up a book and buying it just because it's got nice illustrations in it. <laughs> Definitely. And they make such a difference, don't they, actually? Yeah, really draws you in. Did you work with the artist when you were illustrating, um, for illustrating your books, Jill? Um, no, it's quite interesting. So for my younger books, my novels don't have illustrations in, but for the sort of younger books, um, the publishers pair up the, the um, writer and or the, the pair them separately, the writer to the oh, work, yeah. and choose the illustrator. So, whoops, quite often we, we don't meet um, the, you don't meet the illustrator until much later, um, which is really oh, strange yeah. actually. Sometimes you don't meet them yeah. at all. Like match.com or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some yeah. of authors know each other, but it's um, yeah. most of the time the publisher sort of chooses the illustrator for the story. Um, ah, I see. At least they get you the right person. Yes, and so, you know, sometimes sometimes they've got a real person in mind that they know will match mm. um, the story. And I know for one of mine, um, I wrote a series called Willow Wild Thing, and there's a lovely illustrator called Rebecca Bagley, and her illustrations are so sort of quirky, and they just fit the story perfectly. Um, Why, really? So, so I think the publishers often sort of know, you know, who to go to to just fit that type of story for the audience, because you don't want something that's too dark, I suppose, in illustrations. Yeah. Too Story is quite light and it has to be quite fun. So um, it's quite a, quite an art to choose the right illustrator. As yeah, well. that's really interesting. Yeah, so many different styles as well. It's to... be so cool. Yeah, and they and then the illustrator brings something different. They read something different in your story, and it's so they sort of almost change the story by their illustration. So actually, as an author, it's really mm. lovely. An illustrator's interpretation of your story. It kind of yeah it, it, it yeah. Meant, augments it really actually yeah, so it's um yeah it's good fun does it ever look like how you were envisaging it like if you're writing i presume you kind of imagine it in a way and then how is that when you see someone else's interpretation i think each time each does it time ever kind of look the same <laughs> yeah i think i've i think i yeah. envisage it more in real life in my head so when somebody brings it to life as a illustration it's very different but it's but it's it's Oh yeah, a new edge to the to the whole story, which is which is lovely. Um, and it's quite That's fun. Really cool. And if you go into schools and you ask children to illustrate some words, then everybody illustrates things a slightly different way, um, and that can yeah. have a real impact on the way the story comes through. So, mm. it's, um, so it's so fun. Nice. People should draw more. People should draw every day. I think. I think it's. Um, oh really yeah, I'm so out of the habit of it. I love drawing, mm. but. 
it's just one of those things that you just think oh I'll do it another time or you, it just doesn't sort of yeah I think have actually like tonight actually finding time I hope everyone else is, is enjoying this having an actual allotted 45 minutes you don't need to do anything else apart from draw I think that's great it should yeah, be prescribed in yeah. our weekly yeah timetables <laughs> That was such a good idea. I want that. Yeah. No. What's next then, Lauren? Yes, what yeah. Need to do next? <laughs> so hopefully everyone's managed to catch up. Um, so yeah, this is basically <laughs> our, our basic outline. So what we're going to do is just start rubbing out a few lines. Don't go mad. But um, so we don't need this square anymore. So that can go. Then I'm just going to take away. Just just making the, the lines a, a little bit lighter um so that we can start coloring it in at some point so i hope no one's made the mistake of doing it in pen again like some of my friends do <laughs> so yeah don't worry about too much and, and obviously we can work on these as well um afterwards if you've got time um so this is our basic outline and the lovely reference photo that i was using had the hen harrier looking off slightly um so because they've got a round face i'm just drawing in a curve here to kind of guide me because that's where that's kind of the middle of its face and it's looking to the side if you see on um the one i did earlier mm -hmm. um so yeah, i've just got that that line in to draw and this is kind of like its uh, neck or his neck that's coming round. Okay. Um, so people always worry about faces, but I'll just, it's quite easy really. So we've got the, the beak, which I'm just going to show you in big up here, is a, let's say kind of, <laughs> what kind of shape is this? Pope hat <laughs> with, which is going to be yellow eventually with the kind of little beak that just basically curves round like that because it's slightly on the on an angle. Then it's you can see its mouth coming like that. His mouth, I should say. Oh yeah. Um and then we're just gonna basically draw the kind of a, an eyebrows up from that. So I'm just doing this in pencil obviously to show you, but that is that's basic this up here is what we're going to do for um, the face so because it's small i thought i would just show you so now we're going to draw again with the pope hat so we're drawing a bit halfway down that sort of yeah so it's about halfway down you can draw a line across halfway if that helps then drawing in that the, makes it a little bit more 3d yeah exactly mm -hmm. Drawing in the little beak and the mouth. And then we're just going to go for it with some eyebrows. So just draw in a, a, an arc up to about halfway again between that your own line and the top. And obviously because it's slightly tilted the one on the right is going to be smaller than the one on the left so this is actually a, a much more mm -hmm. uh, much wider arch like that i might just need a little bit of time just to do yep. that in a minute no problem what do, you think, what do you think i was thinking i was trying to think what's the most difficult bit about a bird to draw and hmm faces can be quite mm, that's a good question aren't they I'm, i mean i was remember, yeah. i was remember trying to draw horses and i could never draw their hooves and i think with birds i think it's the beaks they're these, <laughs> these tricky yeah. ones, aren't they they are quite tricky um especially also i find that um if you get the eyes slightly wrong then they can look really evil or <laughs> surprise or you kind of accidentally give them some kind of expression that you're not meaning to <laughs> <laughs> that can be a bit tricky but <laughs> such nice big charismatic faces and, and really bright yellow eyes and everything like that that's a really 
it's a really nice subject to draw. Yeah. I find the feet quite difficult, actually. I can show you how to do them as well after. We're just going to, um, if people are okay with this so far, I'll show you again in big. Okay, yeah. Um, we're going to add in the eyes. So, again, the one on the left is going to be slightly bigger than the one on the right because it's tilted. So, the, the eyes basically attach to the eyebrows as if you were mm -hmm. drawing a cartoon face like that. And then this one's that one's kind of more um, oblong. And then the one on the left is going to be a bit rounder. So it's going to look quite goofy at the moment. But um, all will become clear. <laughs> <laughs> then um, the pupil kind of goes <laughs> in the middle. And again, this one's going to be slightly rounder. And when we colour it in, just going to make sure to leave a white um, reflection at the top. And if you put it in the middle in your drawing, oh, yeah. it's going to stare right into the eyes of those MPs that we're, that we're all sending these oh. drawings to. <laughs> 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 yeah. so would, it, would it follow you around the room if you put it on the... On the that, stick it up, <laughs> follow you, will they? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and put them in on this drawing, on the smaller one. And um, obviously, if you don't get it right first time, rub it out, try again. And um, you can work on it more with your coloured pencils as well. So He's definitely coming to life now as more of a character. Yeah. This is cool. <laughs> I have a question for you, Lauren. How do you when you're drawing so I can copy something but your style is so unique and it's you know you said you had a reference picture that you were looking at how do you not just make it look like that reference picture does that make sense oh yeah no that is a that's a good point um I mean if I could I would I think that's the answer um, <laughs> some, some artists have a really amazing skill to be able to draw and it just looks exactly like a photograph. And it's, mm. yeah, um, it really, really impressive when you see it. But I just don't, so when I see the photo, I'm just kind of drawing what I see. I'm not really thinking any particular way, like I want to draw it in a certain way. Um, okay. That's just seems to be, it's a bit like handwriting or something. That's just kind of yeah, the style that comes out. Style my hand that's so I'm, nice I'm sure that I've picked it up from various places like um at school I had a really amazing art teacher um up until a level and he taught me a lot of techniques that really stuck with me and I felt um really inspired by his style as well um okay. I've also my older brother's a really good artist um and so I'm sure that I've kind of copied the bits and pieces along the way and learned different techniques um which have influenced me but yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think to myself oh i'm gonna draw this not like it looks in the photo because yeah it's just uh, how it comes out so i'm sure you've got your own style as well but you just don't realize it i don't know but you're still <laughs> you know it, it it looks like a hen harry and it looks amazing but it also looks unique if that makes sense so yeah. that's what i find really impressive oh thank you no i'm not doing all this <laughs> i wish i had a better one <laughs> Stop being so modest. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys getting on with the face? Uh, yeah, yeah, not too bad. Mine has got a bit of a funny expression. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> mine's, um, mine's, mine's sort of like looking like this. I should see if I can show you it. Oh. Hello. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's quite faint, though. <laughs> well, that's okay because we're going to colour it in if we've got time. Oh. Um, so, right, if we're all okay with that. We're just going to pop the feet in. So I hope um, I can do it bigger again if, if we need to clarify. But yeah, that's really useful actually. To start with, we'll just put in um, kind of like triangles at the bottom of, of the legs as if it's got flares. <laughs> and then um, they've got three forward facing toes and one facing backwards. Right. So from this angle, we can see about three on the uh left foot and uh well it's 
my his left um <laughs> and maybe all four on the right so basically these are just their their toes are kind of quite chunky i'll just draw it big so the way i'm drawing it face on the way it attaches to the foot is drawing like a circle and then the claw is going to come off like that yeah. okay then the a one at a slightly different angle is going to be the same so you can draw this kind of circle like toe pad can i just say what you're drawing at the moment i know it's all right it was looking a bit rude for a minute <laughs> quick we're all good <laughs> thanks jenny get that claw right. on <laughs> oh no okay <laughs> i'll just be as quick as possible so this is basically our leg and we can have a go at drawing that in a minute see i think that's a bit like drawing horses hooves i used to draw them standing in grass so i didn't need to sort of <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love that. <laughs> I think, well, if struggle, then maybe I can draw some heather or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I love the idea of that, Jill. Either it's in grass or you've got your horses stood in a pond or something. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think heather is quite a good shout. Yeah. The, um, the reference photo didn't have feet on either, so. Oh. Um, and had to use... Were they behind Heather or something? Well, it actually was behind Heather, yeah. <laughs> so I had to try and find a different photo of what they actually look like. Um, okay. So I'm just kind of slightly winging it. And they are these bright yellow, aren't they? With the bright yellow eyes as well. I mean, yeah, amazing, amazing, aren't they? So impressive. Mm -hmm. it's I can tell you a cool things. fact about um, hen hurry chicks, if you'd like, and their eyes. Oh, yeah. Because I... They um, develop the, the yellow eyes later, and when they're chicks, the um, females have a really deep brown eye. They look like puppy dog eyes, like a, wow. a brown spaniel eye. And then the males just have a slightly more smoky grey look to their eye. And that's one of the ways you can tell them apart when they're in the nest. So, oh, that's yeah. interesting. That is interesting because they must be so hard. I mean, it's almost impossible, you know, otherwise. Yeah, I think the other way is by weight. Like the females are usually a bit heavier, even when they're chicks. Uh huh. And isn't it true with um with owls? Because I mean, the hen harriers have got that owl-like face, yeah. they? and day day hunting owls have got yellow eyes, haven't they? I think. Oh yes. And yeah, so you're right. Short-eared sure owls. Yeah, so I was thinking the evolution of the hen harriers. That why you know they've got yellow eyes as well. Whether or not there's some something along the line. There must be something in that. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder what the yellow movement mm. can do. For yeah. them, whether it improves their eyesight in the daytime or something like that. What's your um, PhD in, Lauren? Are you studying something about DNA? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yes. Um, it's so it's called environmental dna the method that i'm using um mm. to edna so you might hear that out and about um okay. and it's, it's basically a way that you can uh track species um anything you like that's got dna um just by taking a sample of the environment so um like soil or water you can take a take a scoop and then run your sample through um, DNA extraction and, um, you know, PCR, like we don't, everyone's had with their COVID tests. So I do oh, have yeah. PCR. Um, and PCR basically just amplifies DNA that you're looking for in the sample so that you can detect it. So for, for our COVID tests, they, um, they have a, a target which attaches to the coronavirus, um, like a specific bit of DNA that's specific to coronavirus and then mm. it amplifies it loads and loads of times so that then you can see that there's that that dna is in your sample and you could tell if someone had coronavirus or not so it's the same thing mm. that i'm looking for chinese mitten crabs <laughs> um, oh, wow. it, they're an invasive species of crab called chinese okay. mitten crabs um and, oh, wow. um they're really hard to see they're really well camouflaged um, so they live in england in britain yeah 
Yeah, so they're from China and Korea originally, um, and they're invasive basically all over the world, and no one really knows where they are, and they cause quite a lot of destruction. So um, that's one way that you can use this method to... um, So what part of them is is that they're sort of um, the outer skeleton, which is sloughing off, that you're detecting? What part of them are you detecting? Yeah, yeah, that, no, that's a really good question. Um, it is things like that. So if they um, they shed or if uh, any any kind of cell that drops off. So um, when when animals breathe out, they you get cells from your lungs, um, from feces or saliva, blood, uh, pollen, anything like that. It's just a lot of DNA just kind of floating around. So it's a bit like um, you know CSI but for animals and plants and bacteria. <laughs> wow, gosh. So you yeah, it's, really, it's, it's really good fun. Um, yeah. I quite I like the mix of doing a bit of lab work and field work and a um, bit of coding. And yeah, it's a really nice mix of things. So you could use that to see not only how much, if you looked at it over a period of time, how either increasing in biodiversity or habitats got or decreasing, can you as well? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, so um, because at the moment you need a different expert for every different type of species you're looking for. So if you were trying to monitor how many butterflies there are in um, in a patch, you'd have to go and get the butterfly expert. And then there's a toad, you need a toad expert, you need all mm-hmm. these different people to come and identify these organisms. But um, if if they have had their DNA sequence read before, it ends up in a big library online and then anyone can go into it and and check um against it whether they've got that species in their sample so um it's kind of fairly new within it's in in sort of the last 10 years or so it's been used for conservation and things more um more um so it's quite a lot of method method development um but i think you'll you'll see it a lot more now now that i've told you you'll you'll start seeing everywhere like oh (laughs) that's what she was on about <laughs> that's so cool yeah no it's good fun um i'm just going to put the tail in so just mm-hmm. to put the tail here and basically after this it's all detail because we've got all the shapes now um so they've got this lovely long tail and i'm just starting to put in it's kind of like if you would draw fish scales or something um that's basically it and then it's the same thing on the wings. So we've got some of these, what do we call them? Oops. Um, we've got some nice thick feathers on the top part. And then at the bottom, they kind of are in a bit of a line like this. They've got those black feathers right at the end of their wings, haven't they? The males. Yeah. It's interesting. I, well, I wonder why they have that because they're very camouflaged everywhere else, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Is it for display, do you think, for the females? So to must be, must be, yeah, yeah. Must be. gray sky or something. I don't know. Quite a lot of the sort of really beautiful male birds um, have that kind of pattern don't they where they're really attractive because the ladies like it (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i'm just drawing in these kind of fish scales just anywhere they're obviously not fish scales but um Mm -hmm. it's the kind of thing you might draw when you're little then um on the other side it's kind of split in two so this bottom part is was all black um and that's basically it. So now you, I'm just kind of adding in some detail. Um, how are you guys getting on? Have you followed a lot? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mine still looks quite rough. I'm going to yeah. have to try and add more detail and make it a bit bolder, I think, like you're being yeah. quite confident yeah. with your pencil strokes yeah. now. Yeah, oh, I think I'll get my darker colour because I've, I've got some nice pencils given to me a while back they're really nice ones actually they've got all oh. slightly pastely chalky ones so i'm going to put in these oh, that's perfect that, yeah exactly what you need for this kind of thing 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm being quite um pressing down quite hard hardish now. Um mm -hmm. I'm get, you can start adding in um your coloring pencils soon. Um okay. And I one tip from my art teacher. Oh yeah. To when you're coloring in make the light bits as light as you can and the dark bits as dark as you can. Oh, okay. Um, so, so you know when you take a photo and you might edit it, you increase the contrast. Yes. Same kind of thing. It makes it look, uh, makes it really pop more and um, more 3D and things like that. Because um, I think some people have a tendency to just kind of color really lightly. But yeah. if you actually start pressing harder, you can also start blending the coloring pencils a bit as well. Um, so when I'm colouring this in, I'm going to imagine that my light is coming from just kind of at the top. Okay. Or may, yeah. So I always draw kind of a line, an arrow in just to remind me. Or That's a good idea. From slightly on an angle, maybe around there. And then you can start working in all of your darker colours the furthest away from that line. So if you imagine that's 3D, so we're gonna have some shadow underneath the wing. So I'm just gonna go for it. I'm loving these tips, that's really useful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's a it's a good one to it's a good one to remember. I like to press really hard with these. Um, and we've also got our white pencil if we need it, which is really useful for blending. Oh, good ah. idea. Because um, you do a fair bit of drawing, don't you, Jenny? Well, I don't know. I, sh I should do more. I've, I've always liked drawing, but um, yeah. yeah, so that's why it's so nice to have an, an excuse to do it, really. Um, but yeah, I've always been someone who just draws animals and birds all the time. I actually, um, I was back at my parents recently and found some old drawings and they are hilarious. And they're just, and there's so much going on as well, like there's mice talking to squirrels and there was one like, I don't know what was in my imagination. And I'd drawn this tiger in a hallway and there was loads of detail on like a, a picture that was on the wall and a plant and then there's like a woman in a dress. It's like, what is this surreal How does your mind of mine? <laughs> I could never draw that now, though. I don't think I'm you, you're kind of bolder as a child, I think. Yeah. So I need to be more confident and just, yeah, do more drawing. Exactly. I think a lot of people, especially um, people who have been into art and then haven't done it for years, um, get quite nervous about stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think people you put, put pressure on yourself, don't you? Because you think, oh, exactly. if I'm going to draw, I better do it really well and it, it has to be really good. But you don't yeah. have to show anyone. You don't have to put it on the wall. You could just sketch away and draw something just for your own enjoyment. And we kind of forget that, I think. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. There's no pressure. I think we should have more sort of art to carry on all through school because we can see, Lauren, that, you know, you're a scientist now by training, but yet you've used your art really effectively in communication of your science. And mm. I think that's what breaks down, isn't it, with science is scientists Definitely. can't communicate the importance of their work but if you can do that that way in a very way to really make the sort of the reader or the watcher understand then that's a really yeah way of communicating. you've got a good niche there actually lauren being able to do both those things like yeah. being arty and sciencey yeah no it, it does has seemed to be a niche but um the the more you talk about it the more people you find who are all, also have these skills um, okay it seems to be a bit of a personality type someone who likes science and art i don't know yeah. whether it's um interested in detail or something like that or yeah. um how things work i've also I was just gonna uh, say that yeah yeah it's i've also read about um you know sort of leonardo da vinci that kind of mm. he was a real artist scientist everything Exactly, um, and he said that art was the queen of all sciences because it could communicate oh. knowledge to anyone, basically, um, whatever ba your background was. And I thought that was really nice because it. That's really yeah, cool. They are because he did loads of drawing, um, you know, all of his anatomy drawings and everything that we're all familiar yeah. with. Yeah, 
and all the designs of um, various sort of structures and machines. Exactly. I think it used to be much more closely connected. It must just be like a modern myth now that art and science have become more kind of divided or in, yeah. in our minds anyway, because I don't think it did used to be. No, no, exactly. I think um, people are starting to go back to it a bit now um, mm. in schools and things, trying to weave them all together, like having That's creative good. assignments in uh, in science and things like that. And it, it really helps you remember facts yes. yeah. as well, I think. Definitely. Yeah. Because every most people are in some way visual, I think. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it's really um it's really common that people would be visual learners. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've just drawn the eyes and I've got to say that's just suddenly given it a little expression. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're a very good teacher, Lauren. Oh, good. So oh, I'm glad that you're following it, okay? Yeah, um, no, we're all good, good here. My, my eye wasn't, I didn't make one a bit oblong. They're both too much the same shape. So I'm uh, okay. that one which is slightly hidden turned away a bit more oblong now. Yeah. I see what I've done wrong there. So, yeah, it kind of goes against what you might think to make yeah. one of them a different shape. Yeah. But um, I think that also gives it a bit of character. See, it's turned out different to the last time I did it. Yeah. It's good though. I like it. Yeah, mine's <laughs> quite cartoony. Yeah. I like yeah, that. I made my eye a little bit. Um, I'm just adding in some um kind of they've got these like wrinkles on their feet. Yeah. Um so I'm just adding those in. Because Jenny, didn't you didn't you start out doing edit sort of journalism and editorial things you went away from your art did you Jenny yeah <laughs> yeah I did um I've always liked English that was been that was like my kind of subjects English and art um and then yeah I did English lit at uh, uni and then yeah went into local journalism so I worked at the Cambridge News for a good long time um and yeah then like nature had been kind of in the background I'd always really loved birds um as a mm -hmm. child um, but yeah, then came to the RSPB and now I get to write about birds, which is just like the perfect, Amazing. perfect marriage of all my interests. Yeah. So there's so many ways that if you, you know, if you are interested in a sort of career in that sort of, um, I don't know, conservation, there's so many different ways in, aren't there? You know, yeah, you've, you've, exactly. English you've done through whether or not you've studied a um, degree or through interest or through art, it's, um, everyone's everyone's sort of journey is really different isn't it yeah exactly. yeah because you have a bit of a science background too don't you jill yeah i did um i studied veterinary science um many years ago so yeah i qualified in 91 so wow. goodness, a long time ago wow. and then the writing sort of took over um i think it was really when my children were really little and i and i'd go to the library would pick out books with them and I sort of remembered how much I love reading and how much I love children's books especially and so yeah. I sort of started um writing stories sending them off to publishers and agents and getting oh, loads wow. and loads of rejections really? a whole, whole drawer full of rejections oh, oh well man. done for keep, keeping going though yeah that must have been really <laughs> It was, was quite, a, quite a long journey and then I went on a writing course which really just helped me understand that a little bit like okay. what you write writing is sort of rewriting and editing and shaping your story um in a way that we're doing with this hen harry here now you know we're yeah. shaping it and that was really the sort of light bulb moment that i had to sort of spend a long time restructuring the story um, and, and then of course i wrote about the things that i'm interested in about birds and conservation so you know coming in again at a different angle mm. yeah oh cool that's amazing that you've managed to merge your two interests again yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not the practicing vet at the moment. I wouldn't have no. time, but my husband is, so I sort of still keep in contact with the vet veterinary world, and um, mm -hmm. sometimes go and help him and things, which is quite fun still. But I don't have to do the on calls in the evening, which is also <laughs> a bit better. Yeah, <laughs> it's good that you get to still keep up with it all. And yeah, yeah, that's ideal. 
so something I've been needing to ask you, Jill, is what are the skulls behind you? I can see some wow. rather interesting looking critters grinning um, down at us. We've got a few. I mean, I don't know whether um, anybody can see see this little creature, which is a very interesting creature. Oh, I think I know what that one is. Huge, huge orange teeth there. Oh, a big skull. It's probably people, oh, wow. looking, people think, well, it looks a bit like a rat. And you'd be right that it's rodent family but it's a lot bigger and these teeth I tell you if this teeth, teeth got your finger it would probably snap your finger because the big clue is this little beastie can actually gnaw straight through wood straight through big sticks and branches and can cut trees down so yeah. you can all guess what this is a um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyone. Anyone, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I've got this actually because I've just written a book on on beavers and how beavers are rewilders they engineer wow. our landscape don't they they change landscapes they, they dam back rivers create slowing rivers creating wetlands so we get yeah. great biodiversity um they're extraordinary they're extraordinary little beasts which are changing um a lot of the face of britain yeah i keep um, seeing stuff about them i've never actually seen a beaver but i, I yeah i'm very interested i can see no, there's lots that. going on with beavers at the moment I saw, them in, I saw them in Germany, actually, um, where they've been brought back. And I remember somebody once said, oh, no, if you let beavers come back, they just take down the whole trees, you know. And I, and I sort of believed that. I thought, well, this person knows what they're talking about. You, know, mm. you can't let them down because they'll just destroy these woods of the um, woodlands around the rivers. Mm. And then I saw these beavers in Germany. And I said to the chap there, I said, well, haven't, don't they destroy the woodlands? And he absolutely fell about laughing. He said, <laughs> Uh, he says they actually help to create woodlands because they coppice and they t take down some of the trees so you get newer fresher um you know roots coming up and you get it's natural woodland management i guess um and then i saw them swimming about that was in germany in the north oh, germany i haven't yeah. seen them in britain and then this other skull here we've got another skull um this belongs to a creature which used wow. to um live, that's massive <laughs> used to live in this country um 400 years ago um, but again, we managed to um, kill them, kill them all. So we don't have this beast here. But we do have these beasts that have come back. They've come back to France and the Netherlands and, ah. Spain and to Germany. Um, I think you can perhaps guess with these huge canine teeth. What like, big you teeth you have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have grandma, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the skull of a wolf. So um, that's amazing. Really that's so cool. Um, are they, um, where are they from, those skulls? Do you know um, what, as in what country? I don't know. Actually, this is an American, uh, it's not a Euro European beaver, that's an American beaver. And actually, they're not bone, they're both resin. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think I work at, uh, at the Natural History Museum for my PhD, and there's a lot of things that you think are that well, not lots, no, I, not lots of things, but um, some of the skeletons are obviously can't be just on show to the public but they're just yeah. as impressive they're, and you learn a lot from them and they're exact replicas um like dippy famous dippy it's exactly not actual bone but it's still amazing exactly yeah. it's so impressive to see it's, it's what a cool place to work wow yeah. it is really nice it is. Are you, do you actually go in there at the moment yeah 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 i've been going in um a little bit doing some work um in the offices and the labs are there too the, yeah. um, the labs are really high tech um they've got robots and things one of my friends um <laughs> codes to work the robots wow. <laughs> and they they can do some of your job for you sometimes with all your pipetting and things yeah um, so yeah it's yeah, it's really nice it. it's good fun I you the robots with the um <laughs> inside the dinosaurs <laughs> like the ones that move that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, not that would be cool. Yeah, that would we be can cool. make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> so they've got um, hen harries have got such a this big round flat face, don't they? The same as owls. So they can hear, I think. It's yeah. like a you know how barn owls. Well, most owls. It's to help. It's almost like a big satellite dish, so they can hear. So interesting. Yeah. And they can turn their heads all the way around as well, just like owls. Can they? I didn't know that. Yeah. 
really cool. Just I'm from really um, cool. doing some research for the animations, um, I watched yeah. some videos and saw some um, amazing photographs of basically the head just looks like it's right on backwards. Oh my god! Well, that is something else I've learned yeah. tonight. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> And that, that flight is amazing, isn't it? The sky dance of flight when you've I'm not when I've only seen it on videos. I have I've never yeah. been brought to, to see that sky dance of flight in in real life. But it's just so beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. They step and they turn. Um, it's incredible. I'd love to see it. Yeah, I would love to see them too. Have you ever seen a hen harrier? Either of you? I've only seen I've only seen them once, um, and that was on the Isle of Arran. Um, and that was just, you know, such exciting. I was looking for them and there was sort of, sort of this bird up, it went above the skyline and then caught it back down low. And um, wow. it was just, just amazing. But no, I haven't seen, um, you must have seen a few, have you, Jenny? No. Well, only, <clears throat> the first one I saw was really, really distant. Um, and I would not have known it was a hen harrier if, unless someone had told me. Um, and then this year, actually, I saw the hen harrier nest. I saw um, the chicks being tagged. Well, one of the chicks oh, being wow. tagged at the nest in the Peak District, which was amazing. Oh, yeah, wow. um, and you could see the female and just like locking eyes with her was just really, really powerful. Wow. Yeah, that was cool. They can be quite aggressive, can't they, when you go to their nests? Yeah, you've got to be really careful um, and go in and out, you know, as quick as you, as you possibly can. Um, but they're, they're really sort of fierce, yeah, like diligent parents. Um, mm. But yeah, there was only that one nest, unfortunately, in, in the whole of the Peak District, oh, which wow. you think is like all that moorland. It's just, it yeah. should be perfect. There should be loads of them. And, and we should all be seeing them. That's what I always say. You know, yeah. it's, it's not like a, it shouldn't be a sort of exclusive um, yeah. treat, you know, to see a sky dance. You know, it should be just something mm. that's part of the landscape. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's sad. I was just rereading um just before our session, I was I was just rereading some of Donald Watson's um book who's talking, you know, he's talking about the history of the hen harrier um and the hen harrier sort of demise, especially you know in the late sort of eighteen hundreds, you know, when it was when when gamekeepers were paid and, and actively encouraged to to shoot these birds, oh, you know, yeah. and um and you know, you you can see why they 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 um their numbers dramatically reduced. Um, mm. I didn't know they used to be paid to do it. Yes, and there was even, I'll try and find it as we're looking, there's even a quote from one of the landowners who um, basically encouraged he encouraged his gamekeepers to do it at the time um, because yeah. they took so much gain. Yeah, fortunately, it's, yeah, it's still happening. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. um, just a quick tip. I've yeah. left a little uh, line where the nose is. I'll show you on the big one again with my pencil. Um, because it to make it look shiny. So I've been oh, yeah, okay. Left, like the oh, equivalent yeah. of that. And did the same with the yellow, although I forgot, so I rubbed it a bit out. Um because it's a tiny bit shiny so just if you leave that white then it will catch the light okay cool how are you guys guessing on with your drawings okay I'm i've kind of I'm i've kind lost of my way a bit with mine it's kind of it went through a, a good phase then a bad phase then a good phase and now it's gone <laughs> in a bad phase again <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to go through a good phase um I've realised I've done my eyes too big. I always do eyes too big. I think I must really sort of, they must be the things that really hit me when about. Yeah, yeah that's all right. More them a bit too big. I don't have an, oh, I have got yellow. I'm going to add a bit of yellow. <laughs> yeah, I'm just adding in some shading and things. But you can keep going forever, really. Yeah, it's the details. Adding, adding the little feathery yeah. bits just hasn't quite, I don't know. What do I need to do, Lauren? I'll show you it. Everyone can see now if, if, oh, wow. if you're feeling not very good about yours. <laughs> Where is it? It looks really nice. I'm actually, I'm so impressed. It's this just, bit it's is really a bit sweet. weird though. <laughs> um, maybe it was, maybe you need to just make the tail slightly longer 
Um, you see, yes, it's kind of right. got longer bodies, but I mean, it looks fine. It looks great. Oh, Maybe you. when you add the legs in, I couldn't yes. quite see the legs with in faint. Yes, I've hardly done them at all, actually. Yes, let's do that. Yes, yeah, so you're, you're tail. It's trying to do those dark bits, isn't it? And as you say, your, your teacher said about trying to. Yeah. Exactly what you think so. Yeah, the um, the black outline I think starts to make it pop out a bit. Yeah. So I've I've got some shadow in underneath where the beak is because of oh. our where our light's coming from. Oh. And then it's all gets a little bit darker towards the bottom. Um so you can just put some shadow in there. Yeah, I've made my be I've made the whole eyes and beaks stuff too big. I should have made it a bit. That's smaller. okay. I'm mine's not totally accurate anyway. It's a it's a copy of I love yours. It's so good. I <gasps> like the blue tint to it. That's a really nice idea. Yeah. Yeah, because they're kind of silvery blue, aren't they? So I've just yeah. added in blue kind of around the edges. So I've just gone in um just around where mm. the where I put some black in. Mm -hmm. And then kind of left left some white just of the paper, um, and then w when you've got time, you can go in with your white pencil and start blending, um, and that just changes the quality of the of it a bit because it fills in all these white holes that you get from the texture of the paper. Oh yeah, that looks nice. So. It makes it just look a little bit more finesse. Um, and I'm pressing really hard as well. It gives you a bit of a arm workout. <laughs> oh, I've added a bit of blue to mine. That's better with adding a bit of blue. So we're going to make sure we send these to our local MPs as well. With the yes. little message yeah. on. Um, yes, the, to draw their attention. The, yeah. And what the details we can find on the Hen Harrier um, action website, can't we? Um, exactly. Details about draw, yeah. draw their attention and yeah, yeah. that's it. Draw their attention. Tells you how to find your MP's name if you don't know it as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I think you've just got to type in your postcode and it will bring up who it is. Yeah, but yeah. That would be really cool to like for all these MPs to get a flood of Hen Harrier drawings and realise what great birds they are, and you know. Because, yeah, obviously something needs to happen to improve their fortunes and, um, yeah. 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 Um, I, when you sort of think about, I was when I was reading in the book, you know, ospreys used to be extinct in this country 100 years ago because of persecution and because of egg collecting. And, you know, the, the efforts through individuals and organisations have really brought the osprey you know, back we've got went gone from two a breeding pair in 1954 to sort of over 400 breeding pairs. Oh wow! Now. And wouldn't it be lovely with a hen harrier, which is still undergoing huge persecution? Um, wouldn't it be lovely if, like, in another twenty years, you know, the hen harrier is fed as well as the osprey? It would just be amazing. Yeah, that would be amazing. That's what we're aiming for. And red kites as well. They've done so well. Like such a yeah. success story. It is possible, that's what I remember. Yeah, and the white-tailed eagles. I think I saw a tweet that somebody had seen one of them down in Exmoor. Oh, um, wow. The white-tailed eagle as they were riding a horse. I was thinking, gosh, that horse was <laughs> a bit of a shock. Um, <laughs> as it was cantering along, suddenly this massive bird um, flying out of the tree. But it's that they're must have been from the... Massive, um... they? Yeah, they're called barn Yeah, huge. Barn doors, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a shock. Oh, yeah, we saw golden eagles on Aaron as well, and oh wow, uh, I haven't, I don't, and they were absolutely beautiful. Just that you know, they just suddenly sailed over this hillside, and you're suddenly really aware that you're in the presence of this absolutely beautiful, stunning bird of prey. They almost don't seem real because you always long to see them, and then when they're there, yeah. they arrive so suddenly, don't they? Um, it's just such an amazing moment. It's incredible. I've only seen one in Australia. Oh, really? Um, I don't know what type of eagle it was, but I was in the in the ocean as well. And I just and it was sunset. And I thought this is just oh, really cool. Oh, magic. I don't think I'll ever forget it. It was great. 
Well, I think I'm sort of happy with mine now. We're we'll probably um we can all finish ours after the yeah. show as well, of course. Spend yeah. time on it. Write a big message on it as well. Save our sky dancers. Yeah. And they won't be able to ignore it. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks. Well, shall we yeah. wrap up then? Thank yeah, how you. how are your drawings? Can I have a look? Have a... I want to see yours, Jill. <laughs> Oh, that's so good! Wow, the eyes. That's ace. That's yeah, really nice. Really awesome. I haven't got them quite. See, yours has got an expression that's sort of looking up. Mine's. My, I think my eyes are too big, but no, they look really good. They're, they're all going to be different, 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 aren't they? Yeah, yeah, and um, definitely. Amazing. Mine's just like whoop. it's. It's also got quite big eyes as well. It's um, really sweet, but yeah, still <laughs> really not <laughs> getting there. Oh, sort of quite, quite sort of um uh it's a pokemon i've drawn a pokemon basically <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, really good. You know, thank you so good. much lauren you've been an excellent teacher and oh, it was really nice to chat good. actually i enjoyed that very much yeah indeed. it's a very relaxing evening actually yeah <laughs> that was great well we should all do more drawing and yeah. more saving of hen harriers and Yes, great. Exactly. Thank you I'm all at home as well for joining us. It's been really great to have you along. Hope yeah. you enjoyed it as much as I did. And um, yeah, search online for anything that you want to find out more about. And um, yeah, bye for Thank now. You. Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs>